Well, who would have thought it? Harley Davidson, a company founded in 1903, would get the jump on pretty much every other manufacturer when it came to producing a big EV motorcycle. I'm really curious to have a go on this. I've never ridden anything electric and I've never ridden the new Harley Davidson Sportster S either. This is supposed to be a massive step on from the original Sportsters of old that date right back to like the 1950s. So how is the live wire gonna compare to its petrol version, brother or sister, cousin, whatever you wanna call it. I'm Shane Shaky Burn. These are two completely different formats of motorcycling. We're here for the late break show and this is episode two of The Burnout, proudly supported by ABC Brakes. So burnout mark two, no cars in sight, just bikes. I don't know how happy I feel about that. <laughs> hey, well, no, it's, I, tell you what, I, for, for me, this is exciting because I think of Harley Davidson as being quite cliche, rattly, agricultural. They can undo their own nuts and bolts by just starting up. These are not those bikes from what it seems. And I want to know how good this is. This is supposed to be like the most technologically advanced piston Harley out. This is a whole new engine, um, a completely different bike to the, to the original Sportsters. I've owned a couple of Sportsters actually. Um, you know, you, you kind of ride a Sportster because you pull up at the traffic lights and you're watching the front wheel vibrating and all that <laughs> rattling and whatever else that's going on with them. I'm really quite curious because I know this is supposed to be a massive step on, not, not like a little, this is not an evolution, this is like a revolution. Yeah. Um, so I'm keen to try that to see how much of that soul, how much of that character they managed to keep. But then there's this one too. I know. I don't know whether I want to to ride this first or this because I look at this and I see Judge Dredd. I see <laughs> I see I see quite a cool looking thing. Yeah. I actually I actually quite like the styling. I think he looks really good. But it's electric and I don't know how I feel about that having never ridden one. Are you a bit outside of your comfort zone? Do I ride this first or do I ride that first? I tell you what you ride first. You sure. ride you ride that first. Because okay, I want to know, I want to know <laughs> what you're like outside of your comfort zone by not hearing well, do you know any what? pistons. Do no, the, fun the funniest thing is, you've given me the wrong key. Have I? Yes. Oh shit. You sure? This one doesn't have a fuel cap, and that's the key to the fuel cap. Was it? Oh, I, I thought know. you was Captain EV. I'll see you at the charge station. I'll show you how to charge it. All right, no problem. Yeah. Saddle it up. However you do that, I don't you, actually know. You've done it again. Wrong key. Are you sure it's the wrong key? Most of the electric bikes, I'm not going to say all of them, but most of the electric bikes that I look at, um, I look at and think, why make it so ugly? Why make it look so hideous, you know? Why don't you make it look cool? Make it look like a, I don't know, a sports bike. If it's a sports bike you want it to look like, or a, you know, a cafe racer, if it's a cafe racer you want it to look like, instead of making it look like awkward, you know, it's like the technology's that new that they want people to look at it and say, oh my God, that must be an electric bike because it's so flipping hideously ugly and uh, different from a normal conventional looking motorcycle or a good looking motorcycle that, you know, it, it stands out from the crowd. It's 60 miles an hour, right? So what I'm keen to see is this. Let's crack the throttle open and away she goes. Oh, then she really does go as well. From a performance point of view, this bike will accelerate. Um, in fact, let's have a little go, shall we? This bike will accelerate, right? 0 to 60, stand still, go. Full speed, 260 in supposedly 3.1 seconds that was, right? Now to put that into context, when I'm starting on a BSB grid and I'm lined up at Brands Hatch and I get off the line, a decent start is 2.5 seconds, an average start is 2.6 and a really fast one is 2.4, right? So this bike 
is 0 to 60 in just under or around maybe half a second slower than than a superbike is it sad i don't know if it's sad that i miss um you know the noise you know having to change gear um you know back shifting or flipping the throttle or quick shifters up and down or all the stuff that that motorcycling is all about the actual sensations you know take away that noise and take away everything else you know i'm i'm riding a motorcycle okay i'm riding a twenty nine thousand pound battery on wheels but it handles it turns it feels fluid it feels everything it should feel it accelerates quite quickly as you as you will have just realized there this is one of loads of um, rapid chargers around your best bet is a zap map app i'm just going to do you a quick demonstration so you go into your, your genie point app say where do you want to charge i want to charge using this connector the ccs do you know what? I didn't know that this will do 100% charge, 0 to 100% in an hour on 50 kilowatts. So if we go in there now for a nice slap up dinner for 5 99 I think we should. Yeah, which we might. It's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You've not <laughs> no, fed me all day. I'm, I getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting hungry. But actually, 0 to 100% in an hour is pretty good. And this will charge up to 50 kilowatts, I believe. So I'm going to put it in. This feels very weird plugging in a bike. Oh, connecting. It's working. There you go, look. Establishing communication. Come here and have a look, come here. Oh, you, it's, you, doing, it's, it's locked doing something in, in there. It's yeah. locked in so that if some rogue EV charge person comes in and tries to pull it out, they can't. Now this is expensive for a public charger, 48p a kilowatt hour. And this is 15 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack in this bad boy that you've been rinsing. 57% uh, charge, so you've nearly used half the charge by enjoying yourself around the back lanes but yeah it gives you an instant cost gives you an estimated time to fill. of course you don't have to fill it you can choose to have 15 minutes enough for a coffee and a weasel i feel quite chilled out if i'm honest i've got a load of performance in my right hand got no clutch lever i've got indicators on either side so i've got my right hand indicator obviously to turn right hand uh, to turn right sorry um next to my right thumb and i've got my left one next to my left thumb which is which is different because you know with motorcycles we're used to having everything on the on the left hand switch gear i've got quite a few buttons half of them i'm not going to lie i don't even know what they do as an absolute petrol head right who raced motorbikes for a living and and loves nothing more than riding motorbikes do i feel disappointed sat on this bike no is the honest answer no not at all a lot better and a lot more natural feeling than than i anticipated it being um you know from a from a chassis dynamics point of view um you know this bike comes with a 120 70 17 front wheel in it we're doing six miles an hour i think it says um filtering along on a on a big sports bike or or anything of any any sort of capacity you know you'd be feathering the clutch now and sort of riding the clutch in and out trying to um you know trying to maintain that six miles an hour but on this it's just effortless another thing i think that um is really important to talk about when it comes to evs like i said earlier on you know i can't help think ev and nothing other than how fast it will do um, zero to 60 because that seems to be the relevant thing doesn't it every manufacturer at the moment wants to make a faster car naught to 60 i mean i read the other day that um that the one of the teslas was doing naught to 60 in 1.9 seconds or something which is obscenely fast and you know, you've got to ask yourself is that going to get boring you know are you going to get to a point when you know you do a few launches in the car and then all of a sudden you've got to live with this thing that's you know doesn't really do much else after that if you buy a live wire because you want to embrace the whole ev thing and 103 miles is good enough for you to go for a ride then fantastic but the only thing you do need to consider is where along that 103 miles you're going to charge the thing up because 
there's not a fuel or, uh, or an EV charging station um, or as many EV charging stations should I say as there are fuel stations and, and that's going to have to be your consideration I guess for now do I buy something like this live wire and um, you know commute on it for instance you know do I ride it 20 miles down the motorway to go into town and ride it home and then put it back on charge at night um, you know when the when the charging's the cheapest for instance and and yeah basically have have an electric motorcycle that that works for you perfectly or do you do you do the whole combustion thing how do i feel about you know jumping on on harley's latest um sports duress having ridden this um i'm going to ride it up exactly the same route in a minute and i'm going to do that deliberately because I want to I want to feel the difference it's uncanny having a left hand that, that's not covering a, a clutch and it's uncanny not having to change gear and it's uncanny having just endless acceleration pretty much no matter what what speed you're doing but it's pleasant it's nice you're not desperate to, to launch the thing off the lights so this works this is simple, it's nice, it's easy, and it looks flipping cool. Opinions are, are, are really important, but if you want my opinion, I think this looks really cool. I feel, I feel a little bit like Judge Dredd cruising along. My only fear, if I'm honest, is whether or not paying £29,000 for this now in 2022 um, will seem like such a good idea in 2025 when the equivalent bike is you know maybe even more powerful and maybe even more fast to charge and maybe you know maybe it'll be five thousand pounds cheaper um because it needs to compete with the the many different electric bikes that will be around by then <laughs> it's the other thing look you sort of sit there in silence and you think is the thing running and you twist the throttle a tiny bit and away it goes it's really uh it's really weird like normally you'd be sat there trying to find neutral and sort of having the bike at tick over so you know what's going on with this thing it's just silent and then boom there you go and there we go oh, she goes. Oh, where we're gonna go here yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a disaster massive tractor um boy, we're off in the mud sorry harley uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, a little wheel spin from the mud on the tyres. Must have traction control, you know. I wonder if you can turn that off. That would make things a bit more fun, wouldn't it? Um, sport. Right, there you go. We're in sport mode now. Go. Flipping hell. Um, yeah, that's made a difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely made a difference. Oh, there you go. Cruise control's on. I'm not quite sure how I set it, but... Um, yeah, there we are. 50 miles an hour. I wonder if we can speed it up by doing this. Oh, there you go. There you go. She's cruising. Right, 60 miles an hour. So sat, nice and upright position on the bike. Um, as I said to you before, you know, you talk about talk about noise and exhaust and blah 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 and engine noise and whatever else but I think when you get to this speed on, on pretty much anything especially anything with a standard exhaust on you're not really hearing the engine anyway you're hearing all the buffeting and the, you know the wind noise and, and whatever else um, and that's pretty much it when it makes a loud noise you know it's feeding it Oh, right. With electrons. I was waiting for you to say when it makes a loud noise, it's about to explode or something <laughs> no. like that. No, no, that's good. That, right. that high pitch, that means it's feeding it high energy, high kilowattage, so it'll be done soon. I'm really keen to know what this feels like to you, because you seem to be having a really good time. Mm. You, you've overshot. Every time we've said meet you back here, you've gone the long way round, <laughs> taken twice as long. I think that the, um, the novelty of being back on bikes, full stop, Oh. As, um, has definitely got me. The novelty of the ease and simplicity of riding this bike has got me too. Mm. So we've had some, um, some 
pretty rubbish weather. We've had some damp roads. Mm. It's not been uh, it's not been that easy to actually ride the bike to anywhere near its limits. But in the riding that I have been doing, I'd be I'd be more than happy to to do that on this or a combustion engine bike. You know, have you? And I've been pleasantly surprised by just how normal it feels, how familiar it feels. Really? You don't you don't pull up somewhere and think. Oh, hold on! I need to put it in neutral or something like that. It's like so, like intuitive. Do you know what I mean? You just mm. get on, you twist the throttle, and and it goes. Mm. It's really odd to, like, to to freewheel on the thing, or it's really odd to, you know, to just be sort of trickling in traffic because there is no noise, not mm. even like the the first little bit of motor noise or anything like that. There's nothing, and you think, blimey, this is this is so odd. Yeah. But you're in a you're in a position, you know, in a riding position on a yeah. motorbike that. You know, from a chassis point of view, is really well balanced and stuff like that. Because the but motor's there's... hanging right down low, isn't mm. it? It's got very that. low centre of gravity. Yeah. Um, it feels completely neutral when you turn, when you like roll through corners and stuff. And you know, the throttle response is really nice and clean. There's nothing like uh, it's not like a light switch. You know, I think all of my all of my concerns and all of my fears and all of my worries have been well and truly put to bed riding this today, mm. which is a really really good thing. You're enjoying the talk, I yes. saw. I actually have two criticisms. Okay. When it's raining, the front mud guard's too short, so the rain comes up and flicks through that hole there and hits you straight in the visor. Does it really? Which which seems oh, yeah. really, really odd. Yeah, yeah. Um, it looks cool, but it comes straight up through there and hits you in the hits you in the visor down That's through that hole. That's a bit weird. Um, big helicopter flying Plus the over. police helicopter out looking for you, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me. It wasn't me. And obviously the, the hole Shaggy in said. the um, the hole in the rear hugger. I know that they've rectified it. Mm. And on the new bike, they told us that it's not there no more. But it seems really dark. It's a that very odd idea. The everything whole point sort of, of splays is. straight up the back, and I and I guess up the back of you, which mm. isn't really idea. Mm. Ideal. Sorry. They're not going to be very happy with me because whilst there's plenty of road muck on there, there's a little bit of rubber as well. Um, don't know how that got there, officer, but um, yeah. The whole idea of this video, I guess, was to, you know, was to compare Harley's attempt um, a fantastic attempt at that um, of an electric bike, an EV, um, to the new top of the range Sportster. How many Sportsters have I had? I've had maybe three Sportsters myself, and they, they date like basically the, the the sort of Sportster before this, if you like, dated right the way back to like probably the mid 80s, and you know they made small refinements over the course of the um, over the course of the you know the years or whatever. It might seem a bit of a weird thing to you that I'd actually want to, uh, you know, to ride around on a on a Harley in my spare time. But you see, the thing for me was always that the way I looked at it is every time I got on a bike when I was racing, there was a stopwatch on me, right? There was a, a lap timer on me. There was a TV camera on me. There was a, a competitor trying to overtake me. There was. There was always pressure, there was always expectation for me to, to be as fast as I could possibly be. Um, but fundamentally, whilst that wasn't a problem, the one thing you need to understand is that I actually really, really love just riding motorbikes. And I don't, I don't always want to go really, really fast. Maybe, maybe in a minute when we get on some, um, some smaller roads, it will be, um, you know, it'll be a, bit, a little bit more obvious that, um, you know, this isn't the the original Sportster. Uh, I did get to ride it up the road earlier on, uh, very, very briefly, and wind the throttle on a couple of times, and it is definitely, definitely night and day, um, head and shoulders above the old Sportster in terms of power and power delivery. You know, that whole low RPM and, you know, lazy kind of firing configuration, if you like, was, was what, you know, 
I thought or, or what most people think Harley Davidsons are, are all about so it almost seemed like you know revving the thing to the moon you know probably rev to sort of let's have a look 7,000 rpm 6,000 rpm I don't even know what they rev to but you know it was almost no point you were just making a load of noise for the sake of it rather than actually making any progress it was almost better just to labor the thing and you know kick a couple of gears at it and let it sort of let its talk do the talking um, this however red lines at something like 9000 rpm and get stronger and stronger and stronger uh, the closer you get to the top of that um, rpm range so all of a sudden the sportster became sporty another thing i read actually uh, and something that the guys had uh, told me about in the in the place where we've taken the bike from was that uh, you know they can see a fair few people finding themselves unstuck on this because you do tend to um, you know the, the riding position is really laid back and lazy sort of thing but the performance of the engine definitely isn't so you know you sometimes find yourself in a situation where you arrive somewhere you know a corner might come up or something and you arrive there a fair bit quicker than you actually anticipate because it's nice and relaxed in terms of riding style um, and and you know how you how you sit on the bike but the the performance of the bike is is far from relaxed you know when you do let it have it you know we'll wind it on a little bit there just to overtake that car um one of the things i just noticed then 100 percent was a new um electronic suite taking taking care of things you know this new sportster has different riding modes it has traction control it has all sorts of things going on there and um accelerating past that car just then second or third gear with a big handful of throttle definitely definitely felt that electric uh, the electric traction control cutting in this thing desperately desperately needs an exhaust on because we're doing 38 40 you know getting up towards 50 miles an hour now but at this point in time you can't really hear an engine you know you can't really feel the engine um and that's not a that's not a criticism it's just that you know these manufacturers have to get these bikes Ooh, baby she's a bit wet there they have to get these bikes through the uh, you know the euro 5 emissions and in order to do that you know there have to be some massive flat spots in the power curves to um, make sure that the bikes get through the emissions test and why that's maybe taken away a little bit of the harley um, heart or soul of the thing if you like but i think if we were riding this bike now back to back with the live wire and this had a, an exhaust system on it for instance maybe a stage one kit which is like the go-to modification most people do when they get a harley davidson i think it would feel completely different you know earlier on i was here um actually i was right there on the left um on the live wire and i remember thinking how how nice and how sort of peaceful it was to be able to you know to actually ride be on a motorbike you know ergonomically be on a motorbike feel the sensations of elect of um acceleration you know deceleration and and you know let me tell you now the the sensation of of acceleration <laughs> on that live wire is pretty special um but you know cruising through on the harley sportster s you know it's like being on a on a on a real bike again um there's a lot to be said for how much i enjoyed riding the live wire and there's a lot to be said for how familiar riding this bike you know with an engine with a clutch with gears with rattles with clonks with noise with whatever else you know how how familiar that feels we'll have a little little part away everybody there you go um wouldn't exactly call that a third or fourth gear wheelie but um certainly accelerating hard in first gear after pulling away quite slowly you know ever so slightly lifted the front wheel up and you know just winding the bike on now fifth gear you know plenty going on um but at the end of the day let's be let's be brutally honest you know you're not buying this bike because you want to go flying around country lanes at well it's another part <laughs> sorry for the uh the, the sort of jolt in my voice then but um 
one thing they haven't fixed is the way these bikes ride, uh, you know, imperfections in the road, if you want to call it that. You know, you hit a little drain cover or a manhole cover, and if there's a little dip in it, you, uh, you know, you definitely know all about it. You know, this bike, if it had a, if it had a character, it'd be a, it'd be like a little thug, you know. Um, it's got that aggressive stance. It's got that like kind of what are you looking at? Um, and it's got all of the all of the kind of cool of that kind of style. But like I said, when you get on it and ride it, you feel you feel no pressure to do anything other than just kind of sit on it and uh, you know enjoy the ride and take it in. And in fairness, this road that I'm riding on it now, you know, it's perfect cruising along. I'm in no rush. The thing I like about Harley's is. If you can get on one and you've got nowhere particular to go and no time that you have to be there, then you can really just enjoy the ride. This is a massive leap, a massive leap into, um, you know, a sort of semi-unknown era for them because, you know, this shares the same engine as the, as the new Pan America. Um, which ironically puts out around 150 horsepower, whereas this thing is about 125. Um, but 125 horsepower in something as you know small and, and compact as this thing is actually really good fun, um, and it's a massive step on from you know from where the original Sportster was. Now, the Sportster S. What I forgot to mention was is. Do you know what it really reminds me of? With that massive, chunky, looks like a rear wheel on the front wheel. Reminds me of when the Fat Boy first came out. Termin Terminator yeah, 2, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously with the shotgun. And yeah. this reminds me of a, like a sort of like 2022's almost version of that. I know they probably still do the Fat Boy. They do a Fat Bob. It's much more like the Fat Bob. It's like a sort of baby Fat Bob with like a tracker kind of rear end. It has that 160 section front tire in there. Yeah. And I'm almost intrigued to see what it would be like if you put the, the front wheel out of the live wire, for instance, which is like, it's conventional. It's a 120, yeah. 70, 17. Yeah. So when you lean the live wire into a corner, the bike drops down and falls into the corner for you. So it helps yeah. you to steer. Whereas on the sports duress, you almost feel like the steering's all done over the rear. So you kind of pull the thing over because it's got this massive fat front tire I on know. it. But from a performance point of view, flipping out, it's- uh, Is it yeah. quick? Yeah. It is so different from the original Sportster, so much more refined. There's one little niggle that I've got and once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And that is the, <laughs> the valve train, the variable valve train or the fuel injection or whatever it is. Yeah. When you're going dead slow through like a little village or something like that, yeah. you hear this rattle and you it hear a, it for the first time. Yeah, yeah, it's a clatter. A I clatter. heard it. It's the top end. It's yeah. definitely up here. Yeah. And once you definitely. hear that, you can't unhear it. I also think that it's almost cruel to lend us the bike with a standard exhaust on because nowadays, <laughs> because of because of emissions, because of Euro 5, because of everything that's going on, yeah. things get so strangled. Um, it's like... You feel it, like there's a lion that, that could be yeah. waiting to come... So you buy this and immediately start ticking some catalogue boxes. And of course. But then that's the whole idea of, of, um, of a Harley for me in the first place. Yeah. You buy something that's vaguely how you want your bike to be. Yeah. And then you do all the little bits and pieces that you want to do to make it your own. Yeah. I forgot to mention on the live wire when we were at the rapid charge point, of course, you don't have to rapid charge. Just like your mobile phone, overnight, if I just pull this lever here, this is where your three pin normal overnight charger lives. So if you go into your mother-in-law's for the day, or you're stopping off at a hotel overnight, blah, 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 all those things, that, I now, I've got, oh, You put the plug in the wrong place. I did put the plug in the wrong place. I've got to. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it perfectly off I camera. Know, I know, <laughs> Anyway, so that's your overnight. So then. So then. Verdict time, shaky. If I had to take one and I wasn't allowed to do anything to it, yep. it would be the live wire. Would it? Which really, really surprised me because I didn't come here wanting to embrace electricity. I didn't come here wanting to hate electricity. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to come here to Taste understand it. how it was. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the bike. It's, it's quite playful. It accelerates 
brutally fast. Um, <laughs> You've been having so much fun on it. I've really enjoyed what? it. And the irony of it is, the, the sports duress, I've ridden much less today, but used more fuel than I used being giddy on that in the yeah. dryer earlier today. Yeah. I think the combustion engine still does it for me for sure, but I've been very, very pleasantly surprised by the, uh, by the electric version of their bike. Mm. You know, other manufacturers are going to follow for sure, but right now Harley Davidson are leading the way with, with both options. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Burnout with him. If with you want me. to subscribe, do it now. Get it done. Yeah, and if you want to know how to get a discount on EBC brakes, there's a link in the description for 15% off. What more can we say? Get some in these. Yeah, thank Easy. you for watching.